Okay, good morning everyone. Today we, our subject is Microsoft Dynamics GP 2013 and specifically I want to zero in today on multi-currency management. So GP has always had multi-currency in it and um, in GP 2013 they've gone ahead and enhanced it. It's actually been enhanced in the last few versions. So I want to just make sure that we catch everyone up today about the functionality that's inside GP related to multi-currency. And also if you're not using it or you've inherited a system where it's already been set up, just sort of break down the setup so you understand where the individual pieces are coming from. And specifically I want to talk about the setup of multi-currency and then kind of take you how the multi-currency processing works, go through the revaluation process, reporting, and then finally open up any Q&A you may have. Okay, so the first thing in the setup is that you need to set up the currencies you need in GP. So you don't have to turn any switch on because GP always has to have at least one currency on there. But if you're using multiple currencies, they need to be set up. And you can see here that in my slide over here that I've got the currency set up of US dollars. It's hooked up to the ISO code of USD. And then I give it some information about symbols and stuff. And I'll take you into this product a little later in the demonstration. And then I'm going to have to go ahead and indicate some accounts for realized and unrealized gains and losses and assign companies to the individual currencies. Okay, now once that's uh, once you've gone ahead and done that in the setup, the next thing is you need to do exchange tables and rates. So you can have multiple rates assigned to an individual currency. You know, it's typically you see the usual suspects, you have average, you've got spot or historical um, or current. And so you just need to go ahead and set up those rates for each of the currencies and each of the currency combinations. So you can see in our example here, we've got Canadian US to average, and this is taking the US to average, and I'm just actually putting in the date. So you can either enter the date for ranges, or you can put them by days. If you're using a currency day in and day out, then you probably want to put daily rates in here, and you can certainly type them in, and that's you know no problem, it's, that's included in the system. If you find that you're doing this all the time and you want to go ahead and build an integration, we've done that successfully many times, so you know definitely reach out to us, we can help you with that. And there's also even, there are some subscription services that you can sign up for that will actually just integrate right into GPay. So if that's a need, we definitely um, have some options there. Okay, so a couple more things about the multi-currency setup. The first is that everything in the system is tracked in three currencies, or potentially three currencies. There's going to be the transaction currency or the source currency, and then there's going to be the functional currency. In this example here, the functional currency is U.S. dollars, meaning the books of this company balance in U.S. dollars. So regardless of what is the originating transaction, it's all going to come in here as U.S. dollars. And then when it comes to reporting currency, this is going to this company is actually owned by a Canadian parent so I want to go ahead and translate every transaction I put into the system in Canadian dollars as well so in this case every transaction is being potentially tracked at the source and then the functional which is US and then the reporting which is Canadian um, a couple of tips over here is that you definitely want to make sure that the functional currency is set up right from the beginning because it cannot be changed after transactions are posted and then finally, that you want to select the reporting currency. You only need it if it's different from the functional currency. If it's not and you don't have a foreign parent, then you don't need it. But if you do have foreign subsidiaries, you're going to want to make sure that they set it up. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at a couple more things. One is that there's currency translation set up. So what you're doing here is you're selecting the currencies to translate. So when I go ahead and do the currency translation in my consolidation or at the end of the month, I'm going to need to, I'm going to be assigning accounts different translation rates. And so what you need to do is you need to select the currencies to translate. In this case, um, it's being set up for Canadian. And I need to choose the exchange rate IDs for each currency type. Because you have control over what you call that currency and exchange rate combination, you need to go ahead and tell the system what you're calling it. So in this case, I'm saying when it comes to current, I'm calling it this, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but historical is going to be that and the average is going to be that. And I can also, um, over and above this, choose exchange rate for the budget, which is actually great because that means that I can actually see the budget in the local currency or my functional currency and then again in the reporting currency and be able to track um, any overage or underages that are not due to performance but are due to currency issues. 
Okay, so once all of that is set up, now we have to relate it to accounts, and we have to go ahead and say, this is the rate I'm using to translate this account for this currency. I thought set up on an account by account basis. So if you're just lighting up um, multi-currency now, or you want to check your configuration, you can go account by account, but you don't have to as well, because there is also a mass update account for uh, currency transaction type that's available to you that allows you to go ahead and set a range of accounts, and then set the translation type, and then it just updates whatever accounts you do. So in this way, you know, it's easy to get you into a FAS52 compliant um, situation right away because we can go ahead and just blast through the balance sheet, blast through the, blast through the P&L, and set the rates for both of them in mass. Okay, so when you're starting the system and you want to make sure that you've got the right amounts from the beginning, you're probably going to need to go in there and do the currency translation amounts. And what this is, allows you to do is to go into the system and do the translated beginning balance information for both average and historical types and be able to enter the translated beginning balance amounts for a new transaction currency. So you can, get it, you can set it right, right from the get-go. So if you're starting, you know, if you've been using GP for a while and you're just lighting up multi-currency, this is just the way to go ahead and set the beginning balances straight so you can just process the entire year. And also it allows you to put any, to any corrections you ne might need for any wrong rates or things that you might have inherited that just need to be adjusted. Okay, so now I want to do a quick demonstration of some of the, some of the multi-currency setup. So right now I'm going to go into GP 2013. And so this is the latest version, but the places where this information is entered do not change from version to version. Just we usually find some enhanced functionality, as you can see with the home page. So all of that multi-currency setup that I showed you, or actually most of it, because some of it is in the account card, is going to be under administration. So if you go into administration, you can see in the middle section are the items related to currency. And if we kind of take them down one by one, I'm in currency, and this is where I'm setting up my individual currency. So you can see when it goes to Australian dollars, I'm going ahead and choosing that ISO code. I'm choosing the currency symbol, how I want to display it, whether I want the currency, dis um, currency display before or after. And um, what, how I talk about the terminology. And so this way you can go ahead and start speaking the language of that currency and any decimals or thousands of places that I want. And then if you want to go to the um, revaluation accounts or the realized or unrealized gains or losses, just hit that account tab. And that'll take you here where you can go ahead and set the accounts to use in the revaluation of this currency. So you'll need to do that for each of the currencies you're going to be using. So you can see in my example here, I'm using euros and New Zealand dollars and the South African rand, Singapore dollars, British pounds, and American dollars as well as Canadian. So you don't have to set up the currencies that you don't need, just the ones you're planning on transacting in. And any time you need to go in here and you start transacting in new currencies, you can always go in and set it up. So not to worry there. Okay, so the next thing is the exchange table. And so now what we're doing is we're putting in the relationships from one currency to another. So we're saying over here, this is Canadian to US average, Canadian to US current. And so I'm just setting up the different combinations that I'm going to use for exchanges. And then I'm also saying what the rate frequency is. And then I'm going to go ahead, in here there's going to be a tab, I think, just to make sure you see how it got to it, under rates where you're putting the starting and stopping date and what the rate is. The way the system is geared up is, is that it's going to use, so in this case here, if I put something in on April 15th, it's going to be using the date I entered on April 1st. You can put expiration dates, you can put them pretty large, or again, you can put daily rates if that's your intention. So the more current the rates or the more rates that you have in there, the more accurate your ledger is, obviously. Um, but these can just be entered at any time. It's pretty easy to put a new one in. You just go ahead and type it in, then just press insert, and then just save it at the end, and you're good to go. And like I said, these can be all integrated in. So if you don't want to, if you don't want to go through the task of entering these, we can build an integration for you. We've done it many times successfully. Okay, and then here is where I'm going ahead and I'm saying for each company, what currencies are they using? So in this case, I'm saying the Canadian dollars is used by this company and this company and this company, and I'm using the average rate in these. I'm using the buy rate 
in these. I'm using the sell rate in these. So that single Canadian currency has three different rates associated with it. And then the final item on this is just the ability to go into euro relationships. So if I have to tri triangulate between the euros and the under any other underlying currencies, I've got a place here to go ahead and set that up. Okay, and the final piece of information is going to be under the financial area. And this is going to be under the accounts, where I'm going to go ahead and set up the individual accounts. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, my Canadian bank or my Australian bank account, and I click on the currency tab, and I can say what currencies are valid for this one. I can also mark all of them and make it all of them. And I can say whether this account is subject to revaluation and what the currency translation type is. And there's a couple of options here under revaluation. So I can either revalue by net changes or period balances, and I can post it either to the account or the financial offset if I do not want to directly take the exchange gain or loss to the individual account itself. So there's quite a few functions over there. And then if you find that um, you don't want to go account by account, there is that mass, that mass update that you can go ahead and use inside here that's going to allow you to go ahead and believe it's under routines. To go ahead and um, just be able to do them a whole series of accounts at once. Okay, so let's go back to our slideshow for a minute. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is sub-ledgers. So the um, inside of the individual ledgers, like accounts payable and accounts receivable, you can assign currencies to um, vendor classes and customer classes. You can also assign currency codes can be set at the customer level and the vendor level, and revaluation can be run in AP and AR. So you can revalue all of your um, customers and your vendors. So at the end of each month, after you've gone ahead and printed out the statements, you may want to revalue them inside the sub-ledger and so display the individual details of each customer is revalued in addition to the balance sheet being revalued. And then there's two different revaluations. As I was just saying earlier, you can revalue the sub-ledger data, which allows you to do the underlying, and you can also revalue whatever Gemma Ledger accounts have been set up for revaluation inside your Gemma Ledger account card. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a quick demonstration of revaluation and financial reporting. So we're back in GP, and if you notice, I go into a customer card. And we'll set this customer. And we go into options. And under options, I assign a currency and a rate to each one of my customers. So this means that when I transact with this customer, they want to speak to me in U.S. dollars. So regardless, they might have had some Canadian transactions, but I'm going to keep this account as a U.S. dollar account, regardless of what, of what um, transaction it's sourced in. And when it comes time for the rate, for the revaluation, I'm going to do it at the buy rate. And so you're just setting this so that when you do the revaluation here, that you can go ahead and do that. So the revaluation is done in two places. I think I showed you in the earlier example on the um, general ledger account card, you set the revaluation, but you also do it at the customer and the vendor level. So when I'm under the sales module and I go into routines, and that's just hidden here, so let's go ahead and pop that open. Um, this is where we can go ahead and we can do the revaluation. I also do it under the financial area. And you can see there's two items here. There's the revaluation and then there's the currency translation. The difference here is the revaluation here is going to go ahead and revalue the subledger into my functional currency. And I'm using the month end and I'm going to revalue whatever accounts have been marked based on whatever date I tell it to revalue. If I'm going to do any reversings, I can, I can go ahead and set that. And I can either do realized or unrealized gains or losses. And then I just go ahead and I just revalue. And this will go through the routine. I'm not going to do it right now because it will take a couple of times. But this is, in, this is where you go in to do the revaluation of all of your items. And then you also go into the currency translation 
And what that's going to do, I have to just do a little more setup to get this working over here, but that's going to go ahead and do the currency translation, which in this example is going to go ahead and now calculate all of the accounts into Canadian dollars. Okay, so now let me just continue on and I just want to show you now how it's brought together into a report. So I'm a management reporter, so I have two different companies set up. I've got a Canadian company and I've got a US dollar company. So you can see here that under currency source, I can go ahead and set this company by company inside a report or I can set up any column. I can say what reporting currency I'm using. So in this case, I've got two different I've got two different values. I've got a US dollar column and I've got a Canadian dollar column. Now this can also be filtered by using the dimension filter. I can go ahead and say this is the US company, this is a Canadian company, which is how you can start doing consolidation. So we're able to go ahead and target what currency you want because the books will balance both in functional and reporting and be able to go ahead and say um, what currency you want in a column in Manager Reporter. So let me just take you into that for a second and show you where we set that. So let's just link, let's just go into Manager Reporter quickly and we're in the Report Designer. So if I had two companies, and I do, I actually have a Canadian company here and if I look at these two, my first step is I need a tree set up. I need a tree set up that has, in this case I've got three subsidiaries. I've got um, two divisions of uh, inside this one company. This one is CE and Fabricam. And then I've got a Canadian company. So these are two different companies. These are two divisions of one company and there's my Canadian company. Now when I want to run a consolidated statement, all I need to do is inside the balance sheet, and let's do US and Canadian, I simply need to go ahead and here say that I'm going to use the reporting unit I'm here is going to be the Canadian company. No need to set the source currency to that because the functional currency is Canadian dollars. But when I bring my US subsidiary in here, I need to go ahead and indicate that this is Canadian dollars and that's done by using the reporting currency. So I go down here and I find the reporting currency of Canadian and now all of my US dollar operations will be printed or will be summarized and able to be consolidated in the translated Canadian dollar amount. 